Hey guys, sorry I'm a little bit late. A little technical difficulties coming here. So I see Matthew's on here. We'll find out if you're the person or Matt. And start talking to Brooks running. Hey, how are you? How's it going, Matthew? Is it Matthew or Matt? Uh, it's Matt, but you know, I, I, technically it's Matthew, but you're not my grandmother, so. All right, great. Okay. Yeah, my grandmother called me Tommy, but she's the only okay. person who did that, so. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, thanks for coming on. We're having a little problem. Uh, one of those technical difficulties, I put out, I printed out my uh, questions for you, and of course, when it comes time to get on live, can't find them, so. Uh, no worries. We, we're gonna, Megan's gonna run them over to me uh, in a second. So while we're waiting, I do know a uh, little background information from you would be nice, like tell people what you're doing at Brooks, how you got there, that kind of stuff. Sure, so uh, I've been with Brooks uh, almost 15 years. It'll be 15 years in a couple weeks. Um, so, uh, which is crazy uh, to think about, but um, I, uh, I'm presently one of the directors of marketing. So I lead uh, a couple of the different marketing functions for us. So retail marketing, which is all the stuff we do to support our, our retailers event marketing, so all the events we go to, sponsor or set up at, sports marketing, our athletes and, and our youth sport initiatives, uh, and then influencer marketing. So all the, all the partners we have kind of in the, in the influencer space. Um, so I've been doing that for about two or three years. Um, and uh, before that, I was on the sales side for a number of years. I was a sales manager uh, for the specialty channel. So working with the independent retailers. Um, and I started with Brooks as a, as a tech rep. So I was, uh, uh Back in the day, we were called brand warriors, and then I, I became a guru <laughs> a few years after that. So it's been uh, it's been a fun ride. You know, the, the brand's grown a ton over the years, and I've really got to uh, be a part of the growth. But, but really, I, I've learned a ton. I've, I've seen a lot. The industry's changed. Um, there's just more people running than ever before. So it's, it's been a really fun time to, to be in this. So you're saying 15 years ago, I would have seen you coming out and doing a group run with you. It, it, at one of the stores or that you're supporting? totally yeah yeah i mean i i had a um i had a honda element that was wrapped in brooks graphics uh the adrenaline five was the shoe at the time uh yeah and i would you know load it up with demo product uh you know it was a lot of clinics a lot of events um you know it was just a uh it, it was the greatest job on earth uh and i i kind of knew it at the time um just getting a go out and interact with runners and, and Brooks was way smaller then. So it was just a, you were really trying to build the brand like one pair at a time. So it was just, it was really fun. And, and it was a fun time to be at Brooks because um, we were growing really fast and really changing. And so it was, it, you really felt like you were a part of something. So it was, it was cool. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Cause you know, I came into running probably um, right around that time. <laughs> So at, when I came in, it seemed like Brooks had a pretty strong hold. Uh, at, at that time, Asics Brooks had a really strong hold on the local running store atmosphere. And, you know, there was this, you could feel like a kind of swelling and like a new running craze happening, I guess, craze is the word for it. But <laughs> you've been in on that. So is that where you, uh, when you say it was a, you've seen a boom in running you're saying from then or are you seeing a, a resurgence now yeah well so so yeah so well back then asics was the king right and, and our whole thing was like we, we got to beat asics we got to beat asics um and um you know so it was it, it it was fun to be number two because you really had to look up at someone and, and there was like this 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 target to go after um yeah. and it was you know got to beat asics got to beat asics so um but yeah, I mean, they, they were unquestionably, you know, kind of this dominant brand. And so it was, it was a really, it, it was a really interesting time and a really fun time because you had this target, right, that you could just, you know, laser in on. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, we all rode a wave, you know, I mean, if you look at like half marathon finishers from 2000 to like 2015, it, it went from like a half million people to about 2 million people in the U.S. Yeah. So there was this real participation boom around um, endurance events and um, it certainly benefited us and it benefited a lot of events um and and you know the number of runners i went from you know roughly 35 40 million people who run you know run um to about 50 million um uh and and then it's sort of you know it's, it's stabilized around 50 51 million the last few years in the u.s um but i think for anyone who's been out the last 
couple of weeks, you know, wherever you live, uh, it, it feels like, you know, we're, we're in the midst of this, this, this other running boom um, right now. And so it's, it's really interesting to see that um, people turning to the run and, 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 and just the, the kind of the joy that it's bringing people right now. Um, yeah. you know, we didn't, you know, in, in 2008, nine, during that recession, we really didn't see a drop in participation rates. If anything, running was pretty resilient and, and even grew a little. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to, to, to see what happens now. You know, I mean, I, 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 again, uh, you know, I mean, the, the information we're seeing from, you know, whether it's like the Stravas or those kind of services are showing that like participation is up. People are more active than they were before this. Um, and it'll be interesting to see kind of how that plays out and, and, and what happens after this. Um, and yeah, where I think the this. entire industry is kind of like, how is this going to translate? Like, will these people that are kind of forced to run now with gyms being closed and, you know, uh, close contact sports out and running seems to be one of the only ways to get that stress release unless you have, you know, if you're into cycling or, or have a trainer at home, um, how that's going to translate into the, into running after the, whole thing is wrapped up yeah i mean i i, I look i mean i i'm clearly drinking the kool-aid here but but i i do <laughs> think you know people are going to um are, are going to stay with it you know and, and obviously there's some factors that are you know accelerating growth right i mean when gyms open back up it's it's going to just change right um but you know it, it, it'll also be interesting what you know when do races come back and and, and when did yeah. is that you know because i think right now one of the things that's nice for people about running is that it's sort of their moment outside. It's their moment to kind of clear their head. Um, and, and so, you know, as life returns to normal, does, does this maintain and, and become part of their routine or do they, you know, kind of fall into the, to the other habits, you know, I mean, it, it's been interesting, you know, I've noticed personally for myself, like there's just um, a little bit more um, consistency to, to, to run it. You know, I'm not really going anywhere. So like I, I don't have, <laughs> any distractions in terms of like, oh, I've got plans this week or my kids are doing this or that. Yeah. So, um, you know, th there's a simplicity on some level to, um, to life right now that, that I think is, is enabling this as well. So, you know, I mean, th there's going to be a lot that's going to come out of this. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I think we're all a little curious of, of what it's going to look like afterwards. Well, now, you know, we talked about what it's like for other people and like coming in, but let's talk a little bit about your running and just like how you got started and what what kind of runner you are now and what what gets you going yeah i mean I, I sort of a classic like story i started running in high school um i um you know wanted to play in the nba and, and that didn't happen um fyi you're the uh, second but, guy this week <laughs> so, um yeah uh, i was a big nick fan growing up in new york uh, so uh but uh so i started running and, and i just fell in love with the sport and i was sort of this like classic track nerd uh, and I, I, guess, I guess I still am um, and so I, I ran through high school um, as a uh, sophomore in high school uh, I had to get a job I was I was 15 and my father told me I either had to work for him or I had to get a job and it was much more appealing to get a job working for someone else so I started working at a running store and I was probably two three weeks into the working at the running store and uh, one of the sales reps came in and I, I was like, wow, that's a job that someone can have. Like, they can sell running shoes. Um, and so from there, it was kind of like, okay, this is my career path. Like, I'm going to run. I'm going to go work in the industry. Um, and, and I guess I'm lucky enough that, like, that sort of happened. So I ran through high school. I, I ran in college. Um, I finished college. I, I, I stayed at the running store for a little bit. And then I, and then I, uh, I joined Brooks. Um, so, um, yeah, it was kind of this, you know, interesting running journey. So, uh, for me, running's kind of been, um, it, it's been a big part of my identity. Um, and, and, you know, now it's, it's, you know, what I do to sort of stay sane um, and, and, and balance my day. Uh, it's definitely the highlight of, uh, of my day. Um, when I'm banged up or hurt, I can't run. That's, that, that sucks, quite honestly. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's been nice. You know, I, I, I turned 40 a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago. So uh, I was, you know, looking forward to a big year as a master. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll see. There, there, there's not many races right now. But, yeah, no, it's been fun. And, and to be honest with you, there's, uh, uh, like I said before, there, it's just kind of nice just to be able to run right now and not have a ton of ton of other distractions, like whether I'm thinking about a race or, or something like that. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of the first time in my training in a long time where um, – and right now I'm a little bit injured, but 
when I'm out, I'm not so worried about pace. I'm not so worried about, um, you know, the workouts that I have scheduled on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And, you know, it's just, it's just run, get out more of the meditative style running. So it, it is really nice to be able to, you forget like when you have something on your calendar all the time, how nice it is to just connect with running and not have a purpose. Right. Yeah, I actually switched my watch to kilometers so ah. that the pacing wouldn't mess with me. Because I, I found myself just kind of running harder than I wanted to every day. Um, just, you know, you get, you know, I'm doing, you know, more or less doing the same runs every day because I'm at my house. So, um, and I was kind of getting competitive with myself. So I switched to K's, which worked for about a week. <laughs> and then um, you figured it out. <laughs> and then I started doing the math on that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, I'll have to come up with some new unit of, of measurement to, uh, <laughs> to throw myself off. But... Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it, yeah, there, there's this tendency to, uh, you know, I think when you, um, when you can't race, it's kind of nice to your point, right? Cause you know, you, the schedule is a little bit more, more malleable, but at the same time, like, I, I think you sort of crave that structure and that, um, having a target and, and, and just having something to aim for. So, um, you know, we'll see, like there, there might be some time trials or something coming up soon. Yeah. And with Brooks, you end up running with some of the sponsored athletes and some of the yep. ambassadors and stuff like that. Is there anyone that you would say stands out as maybe a favorite, if you could say, of, of people on the team that you've gotten a chance to connect with? Oh, wow. Um, you know, it's funny, like, uh, like, to say I run with them is, is a misnomer. So, you know, <laughs> full disclosure, um, they're often running and, I, and I'm watching them run. Um, you know, I mean, I, you know, like it, it, Des is a, is awesome. You know, I mean, I, I, I I'm lucky enough to be in Seattle, and, and the beasts are based here, so I I've gotten to know a lot of them really well. Um, they're way too fast for me, so I'm not running with them most days. I, I do I do enjoy um, I love watching watching our team race, and, and I love watching them work out and all of that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean Des is is great. You know, I mean I I think. Um, She's also closer in age to me, so we probably relate more <laughs> on a personal level, um, just because uh, she's only a couple years younger than me. But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think there's this, um, you know, mentality you have later in your career uh, where you're um, just so smart and savvy and you've seen a lot. And you can really, um, you know, you can really <laughs> just navigate things on, on a different level. Um, and so, you know, I think like there's a, uh, there's just a wisdom there that like I always benefit from. And, you know, I mean, I, I think you can apply that to, to business or to life or just seeing how people approach things. So that, that's always been helpful for me. Yeah. I would say, you know, Des and I, and I see her laughing at you there, but, um, as far as, as a runner, there's a few people that you can really look up to and see their career and go, okay, they're doing it right. And, and you look at how she handles stuff and, and goes through it. And we're huge fans, obviously. And it was fun to watch her. With this kind of rolls us right into one of the questions we have. But before we get there, it would be so easy to transition talking about the Hyperion Elite and the Hyperion Elite too. But I'm going to save that. And okay. let's talk a little bit more on a bigger scale about, obviously, everybody's plans have been interrupted by COVID-19. What was Brooks planning for this year? What has that turned into? And what can we look forward to uh, coming up in 2000, late 2020, maybe even 2021? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, on a, on a lot of levels, you know, it's pretty amazing to, to think that the trials were, I don't know, six or seven weeks ago. Uh, it feels like such a different world. Um, but really, you know, I mean, we came into this year, it was an Olympic year. So we had big plans for the marathon trials and, and um, we really, um, I thought did a great job with our, our activation there and, and, and really coming to life that weekend. Um, we had big plans for the track trials, obviously, with our athletes there. Um, and then, you know, I mean, and then, right, we had, you know, big campaigns planned throughout the year for shoe releases. Um, you know, we, we introduced the Hyperion um, Elite and Hyperion Tempo. They're, they, you know, I know we'll get to it later, but, the, you know, Hyperion Elite too. And so there were some new technologies coming, new, um, new shoes coming. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I think the biggest um, challenge with, with, with COVID-19 is just, it, it's not necessarily like um, on the product side, because some of these shoes are in the pipeline, they're, they're coming no matter what, or, or the technology is available. It's really what's the, um, 
what does the world want right now? You know, and, yeah. and what's the right tone to set and everything, you know, and I, I think, you know, right, we really see ourselves as, you know, our, our purpose as a brand is to, um, to really inspire people to, to get out there and, and to run. Um, and, and so that's kind of the cue we're taking right now. And so um, the bet plans for the balance of the year, you know, to be honest with you, like, um, I, I joke that I'm taking things two weeks at a time because I feel like I've, I've got a good handle on, on the next two weeks. Um, beyond that, I, I don't really know. Um, we're obviously planning a little bit longer term and, and we've got a couple of plans and contingencies. But and I, I, I think where we really see ourselves is how do we continue to keep people motivated, excited, inspired to run and, and just, you know, kind of getting out there and, and doing their best, you know, and, you know, I mean, there's this global element too, right? You know, uh, we, we talk to our teams in Europe and a number of the markets there, people can't even run. They're, they're not going outside. So th yeah. they've started this campaign, you know, run happy at home. And it's people doing yeah. crazy at home workouts. Yeah. Um, and, and it's amazing to see, you know, it's really inspiring. You know, I, you know, I think like when I get, you know, I, I complained before that, oh, I'm doing the same runs all the time. So, well, at least I can go out and run, you know? Yeah, it's not in your um, living room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not doing six meter loops in my backyard or whatever they're doing. So, you know, I mean, I, I think it's one on, on one level, it's been really inspiring to see people um, continue um, to stay active and, and stay motivated. And, and, and um, you know, so I think for us, it's, it's really working through all those plans. What's the right tone to strike? You know, we might come out with shoes later in the year, or we are going to come out with shoes later in the year. But we're probably not going to launch them the way we had originally planned. You know, because yeah. it's going to be less about, you know, X, Y, and Z and, and more about, okay, well, how are we helping people stay active and stay moving and, and you know, kind of keeping, keeping all of those things top of mind. Yeah. And the other thing I, I hear is, you know, your partners that help sell Brookshoes, so the local running stores yeah. or the running warehouses or whatever, you know, they need to have, they need to get rid of product that they have, but they also need to have new product to get people excited to shop. Um, so that's, I think, where the balance is for you guys. And how are you guys deal with that? Yeah, you know, you can imagine, right, everyone right now is sitting on, you know, basically a quarter's worth of inventory, you know, because Q2, you know, I mean, obviously there, there's product being sold right now, but it's not necessarily the volume anyone expected. So um, there's a lot of product that's sitting out there. Um, and so there's both the mechanics of, literally what are we going to do with these how are we going to move through it there's a storage component to it um there, there's all these <laughs> factors that, that you're thinking through um but then there's also yeah how are we going to support our retail partners who you know need to make money on this product um and 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 then how do we balance that with these shoes that are coming right they're, they're on the boat so or they're going to be on the yeah you know, they're going to be coming in soon um and so yeah i mean so you're doing some things you're delaying some intro dates you're moving some things around a little bit. There, there's only, you know, certain things you might be adjusting, you know, we're, oh, we're you know, we were going to make three colors of this shoe. We're only going to make two, you know, I, you know, it, it's really a, um, again, I mean, these are, um, these are decisions that are made, you know, 24 months out, 30 months out that we're now making, you know, on the fly, so to speak. Yeah. So there's never quite been anything like this. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think every brand's working through the, um, supply chain, the inventory issue, um, and, and, and yeah, there, there's real challenges out there. You know, um, we're a brand that's been built by the, the specialty channel. So we're, we're really um, sensitive to, to, to the needs of those partners and trying to figure out, you know, all, all the things that, that we can do for them. Um, it's challenging right now when, when, when stores are closed, you know, it's just hard for runners to, to get out and support. I mean, I've been blown away you know i you know seeing via social or, or or wherever just the outpouring of support for these independent retailers they're really the heart of their running community and it's been awesome yeah. to see all the um all the ways runners are, are are working to help them uh but but it's it's challenging you know and so you know i mean I, everyone's doing their part right now but you know i think once uh, once stores open back up yeah. and people can go in and support them, I, I think we're, we're pretty bullish that, you know, runners are going to come back and, and, and get the store pretty quickly. Yeah. I think people are craving it. I'm excited. It, like you said, you can't tell when it's going to go back into, if it ever goes back to normal, normal, but when people are going to be able to get together, I think, you know, hopefully 
people are going to rush to be back into the stores, rush to back to support their community and, and run with each other. Like uh, we have a running group here in Baltimore and uh, all of us are staying connected through chat, but it's not the same as, as, as running with each other. Yeah, I mean, runners are, are social creatures, you know, so I mean, I, I, I don't know when races are going to come back, right? But, but I, I think people are going to be dying to do them, right? I, yeah. I think they're going to be dying to go to run clubs and, and, and run with other people. Um, you know, it's a, um, it's such a sort of natural inherent thing. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, again, no one knows exactly when that's going to be, but but I definitely, you know, I, I, I anticipate participation is going to be really healthy whenever whenever yeah. it can be. Plus, there's going to be a ton of nurses and doctors getting into <laughs> running because didn't you guys do something huge for the care workers recently? We did, yeah. It was it was a really exciting program. You know, um, you know, I think the one thing that uh, you know you mentioned it before that, that there's a lot of there's a lot of inventory right now. And, and so, you know, I think we wanted to uh, give back to, to the healthcare workers who are, who are doing so much right now. And so we did a, uh, a giveaway in, in the U S and, and one in Europe uh, where we gave shoes to uh, healthcare workers. So it could have been anyone in, 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 who's working in the healthcare industry. It wasn't just doctors or nurses. Um, and um, so we gave away uh, 10,000 pairs in the U S and, and 3000 pairs in, in Europe. Um, and they went, insanely fast um, wow. which was awesome to see um and then our, our customer service team did an amazing job of placing the orders getting them out to people so it was really cool last week it was really like the first week you started seeing it pop up on social um and so it was really uh it was really cool to see it because uh you know people were getting their shoes and and you know it's like it's one thing to you think about it, you do it, and but to see it really uh, manifest with shoes getting on feet was was really exciting. And so, um, how did that how did that happen? Did, was it shipped to them, or was there pickup stations? Like, how did they? Uh... So uh, it, it was sent to them. So um, th they apply applied is probably the wrong term, but but they were they filled out a claim form, basically. Yeah. Um, and and we um, you know I mean and, and and we were able to send just to them. Yeah. We we thought about doing it a couple different ways, and to be honest with you, the uh, the, the logistics of distribution um, w was the hardest to solve for because right now, I mean, hospitals right now are just, you know, like they're not, um, it's not the easiest place to ship stuff into or anything. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's just, it, we, we ended up just different, uh, giving them straight to, to the uh, recipients and, and that worked out really well. Um, it, it ended up being, you know, a lot of, a lot of single pair orders, but again, you know, I mean, I, I think it was, um, every, it, you know, right now, so much of the plans we're doing are reacting or it's dealing with cancellations. So it's not fun, right? I mean, like, we like, yeah. we like activating. And not a lot of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this, this was one of the projects that everyone got really excited about, right? So it was a lot of work, it was a lot of complexity, but it was like, at the end of the day, we were all really pumped to, to do something fun that, that could give back. So yeah, it was, it was, it was nice to have those kind of like moments that, that people could rally around and come together. Yeah, I, and I, I think that is uh, the thing that's fun. You, if you turn on your news, you hear a lot of negativity. And, you know, you see it, even in social, uh, there's a lot of negativity. So I love seeing these little perks, these sunshine, and just a little bit of hope that's like, hey, things are going to be okay. There's people out there that are good that are working towards this. And, and you know, it was nice to see you guys stepping up and, and helping uh, the, you know, first responders and, and nurses and people out there that are taking care of people on the front line. So kudos. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a great project for the team to work on. And, um, you know, it was a, uh, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it was, there was so much, uh, you know, it's not even negativity as much as it's just so much disruption. Right. Yeah. And change. And, and like, we are a very formulaic business. So, um, if, if there was going to be change, it was nice to have kind of stuff like this that, that we could respond to and, and get out and support. Yeah. So let's, let's change the tune, switch it up here a little bit. And let's talk about one of our favorite shoes that we have gotten to review for you guys is a yeah. tempo here with the DNA flash. And this is a super critical foam. Super critical. Yeah. It's the one where they cool it and then they. Oh it. yeah. yeah. So it's, um, Oh boy, you're, you're, I, I get the footwear team out here. It's, it's, it's <laughs> infused. So yes, in essence, yeah. yes, it's, it's, um, 
kind of put together that way where it's um, sort of rapidly heated, rapidly cool to kind of get it to be the way it is. So, um, yeah, it's a beautiful shoe. Uh, are you running this one? I do. I do. I, I, I got a pair, um, I don't know, some point in the fall. And uh, at that point, like our elite athletes had been wearing it. And, you know, a few people had been wear testing it, and everyone was really excited about it. But, um, you know, I was kind of like, not skeptical, but I was kind of like, yeah, let, let me, let me, let me try it myself. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the, the phone's unbelievable um, to, yeah. to the point where, you know, I mean, I, I think we're, um, I think we're trying to figure out how we, how we can leverage it across other products, right? Um, now, yeah. it delivers a really unique ride, so it's not necessarily the right thing for every shoe that we make. Um, but it's, um, I mean, it's super light, super responsive, but it, it, it's not, it's not firm. I mean, not I, I think that balance is really hard to strike because, I mean, I, I, I like a, a, a responsive shoe and a light shoe. And, and a lot of times those are firm. Um, and, and this is not, I mean, they're, they're, it's just a really incredible ride. And that's part of the exciting thing about some of the stuff that's happening with shoes right now is that it used to be if you wanted to race flat, you had a really firm, low stack, you know, cut out all yeah. the details on the upper, make it as light as possible. But if you weren't running a sub three hour marathon, they're probably going to beat up your legs pretty bad over the marathon. Well, now we're seeing cushions like this come into the market where you're getting a lot, a lightweight package, but with a lot more cushioning in it. And we really like the way this one gives kind of that energy back to you as you bounce kind of through your steps. So that's why this one really appealed to us. And I mean, it's lightweight, but um, yeah, I'll hit myself in the head with it. Um, it's lightweight, it's a fun shoe. I think it looks great. So yeah, this is one that we would probably recommend to just about any runner beginner or somebody who likes to uh, pick up the pace. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just want to put on a shoe that feels good, that like makes yeah. you feel good running. Um, you know, I mean, you obviously want a, um, there's a performance quotient, you know, and, and depending on what you're trying to do, you know, yeah, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tool that, that you're, you're going to lean on. But there's also just this element of like, I, I just want to put on a shoe that feels good, makes me feel fast, that, get, you know, turns me over. Uh, and, and, and it's nice, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think one of the things that's like been uh, awesome is that like, um, sure our elites love it right it's all they want to wear but like <laughs> pretty much everyone who um who else who has worn it right but whether they're you know kind of wherever they would rank on the running spectrum loves the feel of the shoe and loves the foam so it's been this incredibly like you know it, 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 I, I think it's a really good example that like a really well-built shoe really well-built foam is going to appeal to a lot of different people and 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 the experience you get from it is is the best part right i mean that that's what keeps you coming is that it just feels good to run it um you know it's it's all those things it's it's the balance is really well you know um it, it's just a really well built product and and as we've tested that foam in other shoes um it, it's you're seeing the same results so it's it's not just some sort of like magic thing that just happened there I think we're seeing it as we work on the next iterations that, that no, like th there's something here that, that's really working and, and, it, and it's, it's a benefit to the runner um, from all the, all the ways that we can measure it, right? All the tests we're doing in the lab, but also there's a benefit to the runner just in terms of like uh, the, the mental feel and, and ride and yeah. the benefit of the shoe. And, and you said that, and you're, you're obviously going to try putting this in some other shoes. One of the other shoes that you're putting it into is the Hi Hyperion Elite 2. Yep. So I'm guessing that that's going to have a, some, since this doesn't have that firm racer feel, Hyperion Elite 2 probably has a plate in it. It looked like it was sandwiched in the shoe that we saw Des, Des wearing um, from the Olympic trials. Can you talk to us a little bit about what to expect from that shoe? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, the, um, you know, like I said, the, the feedback on this foam was just so universal. And one of the things that people said was like, why can't you put this foam in the Hyperion Elite? <laughs> um, you know, and it was like, you know, it's one of those things where like, oh, it's not that simple, you know, but like it kind of was, right? It was really like we had this incredible foam. Um, we had a really incredible shoe with the Elite um, that, um, you know, the, 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 the dimensions on it, the plate worked really well. Um, 
And so we, um, you know, it, it, you know, it, the most simplistic way to describe it is that like the, um, yeah, it's, it's really the Hyperion elite um, plate with the, the, the nitro foam um, or the DNA flash foam that, that, that kind of gives it that lighter, soft, uh, kind of softer, more responsive ride that, that you get in that DNA tempo, but with the plate that gives it a little bit more um, that, that kind of like that, that sort of iconic flat ride right now. Yeah. It's, I, I think that when we talk about what makes the shoes work with the plates, people underestimate the foam and the bounce and then the, the plate pushing you forward. And I think that that combination definitely interested in seeing how that works out for the shoe and, and where it evolves, evolves the elite. Um, let's take a couple questions. Uh, from people that have written yeah. in. I'm gonna... One thing real quick. Yeah, the foam is very, always underrated. You know, the, the foam is Pippin to Jordan, to, to use a basketball analogy. Um, yeah. And I think everyone focuses on the plates and the plates are really important, uh, but the foam is, is really vital uh, because I think the foam is, is ultimately what's driving so much of the experience that you're feeling between you and the ground. Um, and, and as, you know, as the... Um, as you start getting versions two and versions three of these shoes, that's going to be the biggest differentiator is going to be the foam and the quality of that foam and, and the experience and ride it's delivering. So uh, I think for us as people that review shoes, one of the most exciting things is, is right now shoes got lighter in, in the past couple of years, which was exciting. Now the foams are getting changed up and we're seeing a lot more diversity in what's available. I mean, even from one brand, you're going to see, three or four different foams that they're using for different um, applications. So for us, it's so much fun to see kind of like, okay, lighter, more cushion. Like you said, just feels good to run in. And there's so many shoes that are coming out now that have that formula of just like, hey, I'm ready to go out for my run. These feel good. These feel right. They lean forward. They balance. They're soft. And I can go slow or I can go fast and the shoe's still going to perform well. Yeah, I mean, it used to be durometers were the big levers you could pull, right? We can make it softer, softer. we can make it firmer. We can make this part softer, this part firmer. Um, what you're seeing with the phones is that in addition to just the softness, you can really tune the ride and the experience. So maybe you want something soft but responsive. Well, that, that used to be really hard to do, <laughs> right? Soft yeah. used to be sort of antithetical to, to responsiveness and, and vice versa. Or even durability. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Lightweight, but durable. Right. Or lightweight, yeah. but responsive. You know, so, so there was all these things that you couldn't do when you were really tuning one foam. And, and, and so as, as you're seeing these, these additional foams introduced, it's really allowing um, the people who, who, who are making product to really tune them and, and, and deliver these different experiences. Um, and one of the things that, you know, we, we do a lot of um, a lot of consumer insights, runner insights, where, where we try to understand what, what runners are looking for. Um, and runners want different things at different times, you know? And so some days you might want a really soft pillowy ride that, you know, just, you know, kind of gets out of the way and you stop thinking about what you're wearing. And then some days, yeah, you, you really want a shoe that's going to be super responsive. That's going to, um, yeah, you, you're going to know you're pulling on this shoe and, and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're ready to, to, to go fast in it. Yeah. And, and we, we, that's what we advocate on our site is like, if you're a beginner runner, you get one shoe to kind of run it. And so, you know, that might be a ghost You yeah. say, okay, I'm going to get the ghost. It can handle pretty much everything. It's comfortable. It's cushion, long runs, short runs. If you were just starting, you want to do your first marathon, you could probably use a ghost throughout your training. But as, as you get into running, you start to understand like the tuning of it and you get excited about it. You might want to start adding in your tempo day shoe or your fast day shoe and then your race day shoe. So it, it also, for me, when I'm lacing up my shoe in the morning, if I'm lacing up my daily trainer, it puts me in the mindset to just enjoy slow mile. When you, you know it's a fast day and you strap on your, your fast day shoe, psychologically it gets you gets you ready for the run and so we do advocate having th if you can do it three pairs of shoes in your closet at all times for for the different needs that you're going to have so i'm going to ask you our questions uh disappeared from our thing here so i am reading some of the ones off of my phone uh backup phone here okay go for you 
So you're not going to preview them. I'll just ask you. So okay. Um, so one one person wrote in. What would you recommend from Brooks for a 5K to a half marathon? Uh, well, I mean, you know, we, we talked a lot about the Hyperion Tempo. You know, I mean, I, 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 I think that's kind of the, this um, sort of right now. If you're looking for a lightweight trainer from us, it's it's um, it's just kind of there, there's nothing like it. So, I mean, I that's you know, if I can only wear one shoe to run in right now, it's definitely that. So, um, awesome. you know, I think that's I think the, Robbie would agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> that's. Uh, you know, that, that's that, you know, I mean, I, there's there, it, so much of it depends on the runner. So I'm always reticent to, to say like, oh, this is the perfect shoe for you. But broadly yeah. speaking from us, from a lightweight trainer standpoint, yeah, Hyperion Tempo is like the, um, you know, it's kind of the, the gold standard right now. Yeah. And that's a fun, you know, as a reviewer or somebody that looks at shoes in the way that we do, we have to say, hey, th these are totally subjective and yeah. this is what we prefer as they get to know us and know what our preferences are, a lot of times that's how somebody can find out if the shoe's right for them. But uh, I mean, yeah, try it on. But this shoe is a crowd pleaser. Everybody I know who's tried it yeah. likes it. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to ask you, I mean, this is this question, I'm going to rephrase it. Someone said, how do you separate yourself from brands with massive R&D marketing budgets? I don't think I would go that way. I would ask Brooks, how do you guys separate yourself in a market that's very competitive? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I, I, the, the big thing for us is all we do is performance run. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I'd argue that we probably spend more time and energy on performance run than, than any other brand. We're way smaller than some of the big brands. But all we're looking at is this really narrow sliver of, you know, roughly $100 and up on the footwear side performance run. Um, and I think if you look at just that category, um, there's, uh, I, I'm biased here, but, but I, I don't think anyone's spending the time or energy or even resources on, on developing product and connecting with runners to that audience, to the level that, that we are. Um, and that's certainly our um, kind of what we do to, to stand out, right? Is we're really gonna, we're, we want to be um, kind of the most um, loved run brand. And so all we're going to do is focus on the run. We're going to try to make the best product out there for kind of all who run. Um, it's going to perform. It's going to, it's going to work. It's, you know, it's going to really be dialed in for, for the experience for you. We're same thing on, on the apparel side. Obviously we've talked a lot about footwear, but bras and apparel are a major focus for us as well. Um, and so I say that's our that's our differentiating point, right? That we're really going to um, we're really going to just focus on on the run um, and, and runners, and, and that's it. We're not going to play in other categories. We're, we're not necessarily going to um, try to be all things to all people. We're going to really try to make just incredible running product that's going to kind of work for 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 all who run um, and, and not get distracted with, with other things. So no more basketball high tops coming from Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the short term. No, um, yeah. it, it's uh, those are those are classics on eBay. If you can get your hands on them, go for it because uh, there are not many of them out there. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so another question is, what's up next for light stability shoes? Um, you know the um, the Ravenna gets updated later this year. Um, that may be a shoe where we're adjusting some of the release dates. So uh, I'm not going to necessarily hold to a date, but um, one of the things we're working on is a new way to um, connect the shoes that really deliver similar experiences. So if you think about the, go, uh, the launch and the Ravenna, they're really similar shoes. The difference is, right, the Ravenna has got stability to it. The launch doesn't. Um, so what we're working to do is really connect those two and, and really focus on, um, okay, you, you want a lightweight, responsive shoe? Great. Okay, if you need stability, here's the Ravenna. If you need a neutral option, here's the launch. But really connecting them on, on delivering that promise and that, um, that, that consumer benefit around what they are. So, um, and that's allowing us to retool the shoes and really build them um, in tandem and, and really focusing on delivering exactly what that runner experience is so i, I the the ravenna's coming getting updated later this year so that's one that you know I, I think for 
if you're looking for a lightweight trainer with stability, that's probably the best bet. All right, cool. And what you're kind of talking about is clarifying the intention for the shoe lines and kind of in the consumer's mind putting, okay, if you like this, you like this, and this is a family kind of thing. Is that what you're saying? Right. It's, it's really simplifying um, what is the, um, like, what's the, what, what's the reason for, for buying this shoe, right? Like, what's the experience that the shoe's going to deliver? Or, you know, you said before, right? Like, oh, I want to lace up my go fast shoes, or I want to lace up my kind of cushion <laughs> shoes or whatever. So it's really getting clear to the consumer, to the runner, what the shoe does, right? What the experience it is going to deliver, um, and then helping navigate, helping them navigate to, to what it is. Um, and very often, you know, one of the um, kind of the last um, points in that decision tree is stability versus neutral, right? The first thing you're thinking about is the type of shoe you want. I want something cushioned, or I want something lightweight, I want something responsive, whatever it is. And then you get to your biomechanical needs. Oh, I need something with support, I, or I don't. Um, so it's really kind of getting up. Um, a level and, and, and really focusing on what's the experience that we want to deliver to, um, to the runner and really focusing on just making the, you know, the most kick-ass experience we can for that shoe and then helping them navigate which, which, which it is that they want. So. All right, cool. All right, let's get here. Um, someone's asking when the Hyperion Tempo will be back in stock. Is it out of stock right now? I, I think there's some size holes in, in certain, uh, certain size on the men's side. Um, I, you know, what's funny. I don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. So um, keep checking. <laughs> Wait, um, you don't, you don't have the entire inventory I, up there? I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe, uh, I, I think six one was what we were targeting for that uh, to get back into that shoe. So um, I'd say look over the next three or four weeks. Um, we should have more pairs coming back soon, but I will, uh, I'll try to dig in on that. Awesome. Um, I know you guys have done a lot of stuff with November Project yeah. and really tapped into their community. Uh, how's that working out for you guys? They're, they're a great partner. You know, I mean, if you think about like, you know, we, we talked earlier, right? Like our whole goal is to inspire people to run and be active. It's really to get people out there and moving. And, and they're a, um, a really prime example of that. You know, they're, they're free. They're incredibly inclusive. Um, they are um, introducing people to health and wellness and exercise, or they're taking people who are doing it individually and bringing them together. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's funny. I, you know, I'm, I'm a runner. I like to run. Um, I do their <laughs> workouts, right? Because they're, they're I, I like them and they're a key partner um, and they're hard, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I I actually don't like doing the workouts because they're so hard. I'd much rather just go run in a straight line yeah. and, and try to mindless run, try to run <laughs> as hard as I can. Yeah, you know, burpees suck. Um, they're not <laughs> they crazy. So, um, yeah. but I think for us it's been really great because um, you know it, I, I I think the the sport is bigger than 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 just kind of those people who are sort of like only focused on the run and, and that's all they're doing. Um, and as we think about not just growing our audience, but, but even for our, our retail partners, helping them connect into their communities and helping them to connect to all who run, um, groups like November Project are, are really incredible for us because um, they are, um, they're really connecting with people and they're bringing people together um, and they're doing it in a way that's getting people moving and, and, and making them healthy. And so um, they, they've been a really incredible partner for us, I think, in terms of pushing us, in terms of um, kind of speaking to, to a bigger audience and, and, and getting beyond just, um, just kind of the, 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 the narrow focus of the run. Yeah. And you, and you, uh, you know, we love it because you picked a Baltimore boy. Yeah, yeah. For, tech. for what is Nick Roderick. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, he's doing it. He's doing a crazy job for you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun to, uh, just to, um, engage with them. You know, I mean, running is so core to what they do. So it's not like, you know, this was like, they were this like table tennis group and we're trying to shoehorn running into them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like running is, is a really core component of them. Um, but it's kind of been fun because I I'd say, um, they've stretched us i think we've stretched them and 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 now we're in this meaty part where we're just working together and and, and there's all these fun ideas that we're coming up with that that are um that are really fun to work on and 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 you know and, and stretch us and, and help us reach people so i mean they, they've been a great great partner in that regard yeah it's awesome the local baltimore one actually we have a lot of crossover because a lot of our runners 
we'll go and do November project. And then in the Faster Bastards, our running group, come and run with Faster Bastards. And so there's a little bit of overlap there, which is always fun to see. But so I, I've never done the November project workout. Honestly, I'm afraid of burpees. I'm afraid of all that stuff. So, you know, I stay out of it. But uh, some of our guys love it. Like Jarrett, who is our wide shoe reviewer, is an avid uh, November project uh, participant. So he actually probably started more November project and then has come over and started getting serious about running, but it's a great organization. All right, um, let's see here. I mean, somebody asked if the Hyperion Tempo can be used for daily training. I'll answer that one for you, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. No brainer. Um, all right, I am thinking we covered a lot of the questions except for this last one. 12 millimeter drop shoes. I wasn't even aware. Which shoes of yours are 12 millimeter drop right now? Oh boy. Um, you know, what's funny is, you know, when, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, everything was 12 millimeters. You know, that was just sort of like the standard. Um, and then I'd say minimal came in and um, really changed perception on that, what it was. Um, you know, we went to four millimeters on the Pure Project shoes. Um, some of our core shoes went to eight millimeters, but some of the way you did that was building up the forefoot versus dropping the heel. Um, and then, you know, I'd say in the last three or four years, um, drops have, have not necessarily been as big a um, um, discussion as, as before. Um, and, and I think what's happening is, you know, again, we talked about different foams. I think you're seeing different, you know, drops depending on, on the nature of the shoe and, and what you want it to do. So, you know, I definitely think there's, there's still some shoes that are, that are 12 millimeter. Um, but, but I think, you know, and we don't go below, um, four, but, but I think you've got a bunch of shoes in between there. Um, and, and I think the sweet spot is, is probably somewhere in that middle ground. Again, it depends on the shoe and what you're trying to do and, and what you're trying to, yeah. trying to get from it. Um, so. I really feel like it, it depends on how the shoe is engineered. If for me, drop isn't that important. We run in all different drops as you, you know, coming yeah. through. It really depends on how, like how the drop, goes throughout the, the soul. So if it's extreme and, and it goes, you know, even an eight millimeter drop, if it's not set up correct, I'm gonna feel a heel breaking when I come down. But there's shoes that I run that are tens that feel great and I don't even notice the drop and I can switch it out the next day and run in a four millimeter drop and I really don't notice that much. Maybe it feels lower to ground, something like that, but I don't feel a tremendous amount of importance in drop. I do feel you know, the born to run, put drop into our heads and cushioning and stack height into our heads. And I, I still feel like that's something that's kind of, while it was great to change some of the things in the industry, I, it, the importance of it is more how it feels on your foot when you're running than exactly what the drop is. Yeah, I mean, drop, drops something, but it's, it's not the only thing, I guess I'd say, you know, I mean, you know, the heel bevel and exactly where you land. You know, I mean, I, I think one of the things that, you know, you, you see more is there's more sculpting in the heel. So, you, so you, they're, they're pushing that landing point a little further forward. So as you get that, you know, kind of center force moving forward in the shoe, it, it's changing a little bit kind of how you're landing, how you're striking. Um, and so, yeah, it might only be a 10 millimeter drop or an eight millimeter drop or whatever it is, but depending on where you're striking and how you're rolling and, and, and just the, the smoothness of the transition, um, you know, it's going to change just, just the experience and, and how you run. So some of it's that too, right? It's, it's, you know, it could be an eight millimeter drop, but you know, you're, you're, you're landing differently than you would, you know, on, on a more traditional shoe. So there's definitely a, um, you know, there, there, there's, there's a lot of factors into it. So, you know, I would say no one thing is probably the, the most important you want to, you know, the, the, you said it before, the most important thing is putting it on how you're, how you transition in the shoe and how it rolls. Now there are some shoes that just do a really good job of that for a lot of different people. And that's why you get, you know, certain models that are more popular than others. Um, but, but definitely it's, it's, it's a really personal issue in terms of just how you're transitioning in the shoe and how it's working for you. Yeah. Did you run in the green silence? You know, I, I dug them up for you here. So, uh, here. Here you go. There we go. The now, original Hanson. I feel like if you guys re-release that, you'd have a hit on your hands. Oh, gee, colorway. 
Well, it, it's funny, you know, I mean, it, today's Earth Day too, right? Um, and, and yeah. Is it Earth Day? I, I don't know so. what day it is anymore. <laughs> um, the, um, yeah, the shoe was really ahead of its time on a couple of different levels, right? I mean, it was this entirely post-consumer biodegradable product. So it was really, um, it was this really, you know, thought leading shoe in, in that regard. Um, and, and a lot of that technology filtered out for us that, that we used, um, that we used in some other areas. Um, but the, um, but it was also just like, it was a really interesting, cool racing flat. So, you know, I mean, these are, I don't know, 10 or 11 years old at this point. So, so there's a lot of water under this bridge. Um, but yeah, this was a, uh, th this was a, a really cool shoe for us. Um, and, uh, if anybody has a size 11 out there, I will pay top dollar for one. So See, I think, I think you guys need to re-release it. Maybe even do it with the DNA flash midsole. I yeah. think you'd have a hit. But, you know, I know this isn't probably as biodegradable, but, you know, we're, we're willing to sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, no, that it was a really cool shoe. Um, and, yeah, no, it's, it's one of my biggest regrets in life that I don't have more green silences. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and that should be a lesson to people. If you love a shoe, <laughs> just load up. up on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can never have too many. Yeah. I mean, what, what's that? Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you coming on um, and giving us some insight on what's going on at Brooks. And we hope you guys are doing well out there. And as you guys got hit kind of harder out there in the beginning, hopefully you're getting through this faster and we're going to see you guys recover faster and get everybody out on the streets running again pretty soon. Cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, it's just, you know, kind of everyone's doing their part and yeah, I know I'm, I'm with you. I, I can't wait for uh for things to be back to normal, getting back to the office. But yeah, for the time being, just hunkering down at home and, and getting stuff done. All right, awesome. We're gonna probably take this and record it and put it on YouTube later for the people who couldn't watch it live. It will be available for 24 hours here on Instagram. But if you have any more questions, you can hit up Matthew or Matt um, yourself. And I just wanna say thanks again for coming on and, and spend this time with us. Cool. Thank you. All right, awesome.